Welcome to the TV and T podcast. I'm Adriana. And I'm Selena. And we are two sisters that have decided to let the internet into the conversations that we have about TV and pop culture over endless cups of tea. In our house, the reoccurring questions are, is it tea time? To which the answer is always yes. And what are we watching? So pour yourself a cup and get ready to get into it. Hey guys! Hey guys! <laughs> hey guys it's Kylie. It's Kylie. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, guys. Yes. Hope everyone's having a good week. Mm-hmm. Cece, do you want to intro our guest? We have yes. a very special surprise <laughs> for our listeners. We have a guest in the studio. Mm-hmm. This is our first guest that we're taking together. Yes. And it's my friend Alexa. Say hi. Hi, guys. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we go to school together, and I wanted to bring her on to today's episode to talk about the shows, well, the one show, the infamous show that everyone's talking about right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're ready to get into it, right? Yeah, let's get it. <laughs> let's do it. Yes. Um, let's start off with our quote. Cece, go ahead and, and start us off. Intro. What's How has your week been? What's been happening? I haven't been home again so mm-hmm. yeah you've been gone my sister has deserted me <laughs> <laughs> maybe i should go first because my quote has something to do with that okay and it comes from Shit's creek and moira rose says has our quarantine been lifted <laughs> and to that i would say hell fuck yes okay. i have just been out in the streets and there's no stopping me like <laughs> I am not like I'm not coming back home for the life of me. <laughs> like yeah. I just I'm I'm free. I'm a free bird and you can't clip my wings at this point. I am so mad at all the people who got corona at the beginning or like that already have the vaccine because y'all are just out here doing whatever and I'm still scared. <laughs> yeah, I'm not scared anymore. I just feel like my bout of corona wasn't that bad. So if I get it again <laughs> until I get I just don't know if I'm gonna get the vaccine. Wait, are you for real? Yes. We're not gonna get political. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Um but yeah, I'm out here. Okay. So <laughs> my quote this week comes from Bob's Burgers and it reads Give me some wine. Give me some wine. Give me some wine. Oh, 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 good wine. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Okay, so a little follow-up from last week. Last week, I had a bad week. And my quote was like, oh, I'm trying to vent to my friends, and they're not helping. So this week, I've turned to the bottle, and I've never felt better. (laughs) No, but sometimes you just need to, like, not take life so seriously, have a drink, and relax. This is absolutely true. You can't stress. You can't, like, kill yourself with life, you know? We're saying this as we're taking more sips from a different bottle of wine. (laughs) I mean, sometimes you just have to, like, drown the pain. Whoa, healthy tip. (laughs) (laughs) No, like, so bad. But sometimes it just, like, gets you to the net. Like, you know, you just move on from, like, whatever it is. And then you're like, okay, like, I was numb. It was whatever. It's behind me. Like, we're moving on. That might not be, like, the healthiest thing, but it's, like, realistic. You're right. Like, <laughs> it's, like, it's like when you get into a petty argument with your boyfriend and you can't get over it until you just, like, hook up. Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. No. Sometimes you just have to, like excuse the language but like fuck out the frustration (laughs) this is why we're not a health and wellness podcast (laughs) (laughs) okay but what is your quote um my quote is from goma girls that has been my go-to show i think since i was 16 same and one of their quotes um is very very relevant to me especially for the past week is i hate it when i'm an idiot and i don't know it (laughs) wow you know situations that someone's just talking on and on about something and you you believe that you're following along until you realize you're completely off topic (laughs) and everyone's just so polite and don't they don't correct you and you just keep on going on with your nonsense it's probably the worst feeling ever 100 percent for sure (laughs) it's like if you're in on the joke it's one thing but if you're on the if you are the joke it's like ooh. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, perhaps not the best introduction to your fan base today. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll prove us wrong. <laughs> you'll prove that. You'll prove that wrong. <laughs> totally. No, that was that was before. Now that's we're going, right. That's right. We're going into the <laughs> oh, weekend. Yeah. It's a new. Oh no! <laughs> no! 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 <laughs> Mm -mm, we're moving on from that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get into the meat and potatoes today. And it's what everyone has been talking about for the last week solid. Mm -hmm. And that is CBS Presents Oprah with Meghan and Harry. <laughs> I just love the whole title. Like, I, the production was there for me. Mm -hmm. I was loving it. Mm -hmm. And I was just here for the tea. Same. Oh my gosh. I watched it with my mom and uh, we cried together. I cried too. Really? You I cried crying? watching it. How so? Like, what, what was a trigger? What was the emotion that? brought mm. out the sadness when you guys saw it for me when she said i have been i had been feeling suicidal and yeah. i went to the firm for assistance and they literally said we no. cannot help you i just thought that was so sad and when she said that they had to go to the royal albert hall and she didn't want to go but she said you cannot leave me alone mm. i was like oh that part made me cry too. I was like, that choked me up. I was like, that you have to be in such a dark place to be felt to feel like, don't leave me in this house by myself because you might come back and see my body on the floor. Like that is just gotta be such a dark place mm -hmm. to put yourself in that spotlight in comparison to like how you're feeling, which is like at the bottom of a barrel, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's definitely more common than what unfortunately we believe it to be. I For feel sure. like everyone has felt like giving up, whether it's as little as like giving up on the day or giving up in its entirety. Mm -hmm. But I feel like with extremes and being in such an extreme lifestyle, there's there's highs and those highs are just exuberant that no one can else compare to. Mm -hmm. And then but your lows are bottom of the barrel lows. I can't be left alone. Mm -hmm. So for some people that maybe haven't seen the whole clip, um, the clip touches on topics of entrapment, marginalization, racism, financial insecurity, protection or lack thereof, mm -hmm. loss of identity, and mental health slash self-harm. Yeah. yeah. So these are some things that we're going to mention throughout and obviously bring some awareness to it. Um, yeah. There's definitely helplines out there. Mm-hmm. It was a lot. Like, I was, like, very overwhelmed watching it. I knew it was going to be intense. I just didn't think they were going to be so candid. I was surprised by that. I was really shocked when Harry came in because he seems so fragile. I don't know, like, if I just don't um, know him or, like, have seen interviews of him. But I was, like, surprised. I was caught off guard by his personality a little bit. He seemed not weak, but he just seemed incredibly sensitive. And I like felt for them in a way that I was like, wow, I didn't expect that because I don't know. I just she just seems so like not important to me when they first got together. Really? Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, he left everything for her. Right. But like her on her own, like I felt like people had like this idea that she was like this tyrant this like evil person that had like taken him away from his family and his home and has like ruined his relationships but you know what that's probably how his family saw her too right mm -hmm. but like to me she just seemed like this like whatever actress that he that he met and fell in love with like you know he basically picked her up whatever and it's like who isn't gonna fall in love with prince um so it's just so weird to see that they both seem so simple that two like such simple people could cause so much like world commotion yeah so that's what surprised me i'm surprised you're surprised because uh, i mean <laughs> they, they were a big deal when they announced their engagement when they first got together there was six different lifetime movies on them i watched all of them of course i know and you get an insight into his personality and he is a very sensitive person he's never really gotten past the loss of his mother mm. princess diana mm -hmm. so he spoke about that in the interview he felt like this situation was going down the same road that his mom went through mm -hmm. and that really choked him up and resonated with him and i think that's why he was so 
emotional, flustered. yeah, flustered in the interview. And Oprah will get that out of you. Oh, for sure. So Oprah is a, a friend of theirs, if I'm not mistaken. She was yeah. the wedding yeah. and everything. And Oprah, being Oprah and an amazing woman that she is, you just feel so comfortable speaking with her because she doesn't judge you. She feels very welcoming to anyone that speaks on her TV show. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't try and, and, I don't know, facilitate this this strange story that makes you believe one thing but isn't. She just asks you open questions and you're free to answer them however they are. They're not shot in a way that is deceiving. Yeah. She's completely past that. So I feel that's that was actually the perfect show for both of them to come on to become so candor with the audience because mm -hmm. they knew and they had that trust in her that she wouldn't try and deviate into some kind of gossip and, right. and tabloids that unfortunately um what was um isn't her father like a culprit and like talking to the yes boys? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that was a big thing he like uh, sold multiple stories to tmz yeah united to her his own daughter it was like no no i would never whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah his, her father is really awful and that whole situation with them must have been like so tough it's like that's your dad at the end of the day like we think it's like funny and like gossipy and we think it's like just like so crazy that he'd be selling stories but like that's gotta hurt like that's your parent and you feel at the end of the day like he should be protecting you mm -hmm. like if she was having trouble with her in-laws like you go to your parents for help and counsel and protection and like the fact that she was losing that in the midst of all of the drama within their family also must have been like so hard when like now on the other end of it when you think about it yeah they can't catch a break she has issues in her family mm -hmm. like they experience issues in his family it's it's tough yeah do you guys think it's a culture clash because like the way you guys speak of family it's so concrete it's it's stable it's there for you but i feel like especially from a european point of view mm -hmm. family members are a little more cold i like to say by like 17 pushing 18 they're already like so you're leaving right have you found a place you've you've got enough money to pay rent no I'll, I'll give you 200 euros you know and hopefully that'll make it for everything but mm. for, at least for me it wasn't surprising that her father or her family wasn't there i definitely was disappointed to hear that he would sell stories about her that's a little pushing the limit mm -hmm. but i don't look back at family as something extremely like secure and there for you no matter what mm -hmm. i don't feel that way whatsoever interesting yeah and and you guys i forgot to mention this but alexa is uh, from europe she's from holland so she can speak on this with a different perspective than us yeah i do think american families feel connected i mean i don't i can't speak for all american, american yeah i mean we're caribbean so like jamaican families are we're up each other's asshole like <laughs> you know it's like there we're so tight so close so to me it's just so strange that everybody doesn't have that and that's like it's hard to reconcile for me because it's like that's all i know you know um but to see that their family is they consider themselves a family, but they're also like an entity and a business and a corporation and a symbol and like all these things. And that can get really contrived, I think. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when she says like, the queen has been amazing to me, we've had such a great relationship. Harry talks about like how much she he speaks to the queen. What? Yeah. And I'm just like, how are you even still talking to her when she's the head of all of this? And she has basically left you out to dry. Like, I just don't know how you reconcile that in your mind of like, yes, granny, like, I love you and we're close and we're tight. And also, you don't want my son to be a prince because he's black. Like, I, I don't know where you put, where you sit in that with family members like that in that kind of situation. Yeah, so let's get into that. One of the big uh, takeaways headlines from the interview was uh, Megan talking about how the royal family treated Archie, their son, um, before he was even born. So while she was pregnant, they said that 
when he was born he wouldn't have protection he wouldn't get a title and there were conversations about how dark he would come out and it's it's been crazy piers morgan oh the my gosh is, you heard about that right yeah. yeah so he spoke about it on his show and his main thing was oh the uk is not racist that she's lying and it's like no sir racism is a thing everywhere everywhere yeah um yeah i just thought that was interesting it's like it doesn't surprise me that those kinds of conversations are happening with a family in that position. Um, I just think it's crazy that we heard about it. Yes, I I feel like that's really? the thing that happens I'm behind. so excited that we heard about it. And excited not in the way of like, oh yeah, I knew this all along, but it brought so much awareness. I think so too. You know, that it, it still a, is a thriving thing that's horrible not only was that racist but it was sexist in the way that it was brought about so the queen didn't directly talk to her she talked to the son you know or you know to to him and asked him you know isn't this a concern for you and never spoke about this with the actual mother of the child yeah and this should have been brought to a family attention i.e every member of the family but the fact that that was never conversation held between everyone it was just directly to him shows how little she took part or she was even accepted into the royal family i thought the same thing i it was interesting that so much of what went down with her and the family was all through uh harry yeah they yeah. never said anything directly to her she just heard about it from harry her husband mm-hmm. it's like in what world that's that's not okay yeah it just it begs the question like where is she when all of these conversations are happening and i just i don't i don't get the mindset of like we've welcomed you in we're taking you under our wing and then we're keeping you on the outs yeah essentially and i mean we don't know how these conversations went down it could have been something that if she was there she could have educated them and put them in their place and maybe they could have gotten past it Mm -hmm. because i mean people are ignorant and sometimes you just need to set aside your emotions and take the opportunity to show them how to do better but she wasn't even a part of the conversation Mm -hmm. so yeah very strange Mm mm-hmm very very strange but i mean to be honest i i love that she was so open about everything that's going on not only did it serve for her to be an outlet and finally express her feelings beyond the walls that she was trapped in Mm -hmm. and her husband but now she finally came clean and i'm sure that she well one she's definitely definitely afraid of what's gonna happen what they're gonna write about her but two a weight's off of your shoulders not not only are you being told you can't say this, you can't do that, you can't dress like this, you can't see your friend because how would that look? You've been all about the tabloids, you need to lay low. Right. Even though she's been indoors for four months. Right. still too much. Right. So what I really am taken back by is one, her, she's always been an advocate for feminism Mm -hmm. and being loud, being not loud, but you know, just speaking out Mm -hmm. just supporting one another. And she hasn't been doing that for herself or anyone around her. And I think that's what really hurt me from her message because she she's always stood behind strong female women. And then for her to hide behind her own shadow was just completely confusing and surprising because yeah. you, know, you would expect her to be completely opposite. Yeah. So for her to finally come out, and she came out very timid. She was afraid. It looked like she was about to cry a few times mm-hmm. on the interview. So it really just shows that Everyone needs support, no matter how strong or how royal you are, no matter the lifestyle or how untouchable you may think these people are, Mm -hmm. that they're still people at the end of the day, and they're no different than you and I, and they're just as sensitive, but they're also just as strong, if not more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the thing with tabloids and the internet and social media, like we've had this conversation, is people think that it's not real. You know, they think that if you amass a platform, if you've chosen to be in the public eye, if you have a a following or any sort of like star power that you are somehow now elevated to a place where 
us mere mortals below you cannot touch you or don't affect you or shouldn't matter to you. And it's just not the truth. Like your comments still matter. Like your words still hurt. Like the articles are still an impact on your day and they can be suffocating for people that are dealing with like such negative press all the time coming at them. And I think people really forget that in the age of the internet, in the age of the tabloids, in the age of the paparazzi. Like, we don't, we commoditize people and they're not real. It's like they're just like a symbol of themselves or like a, an avatar, but they're not an actual person or being. And that's really detrimental to their mental health. We've seen it happen over and over again in the past, you know, 20, 30 years. Um, and it's, it's a, it's something that we all have to think about, but it's, we all like say it and then actively participate in it, which is like very strange as well. Cause it's like, where is the personal responsibility for your actions in, in how they affect other people beyond just face-to-face interactions? Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that was like a very important message that they brought up again. You know, we saw it with Diana and now we're seeing it with, with Megan. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could even draw a parallel to Britney. We just talked oh, about yeah. her documentary and she yes. was all over the tabloids yes. in the in the early 2000s and it's like people don't realize that she sees those it affects her. Anyone who's received like one meme comment on Instagram knows how that feels. Oh, we go to bed only remembering that meme comment. Yes. Like let a tweet go viral. It is like li- it will literally ruin your month. <laughs> like mm-hmm. Do you guys did you guys hear about Britney's like whatever conspiracy or whatever that she's like seeking help like her yeah. TikToks or whatever or like little ways of like her asking for help because mm-hmm. her what is that boyfriend husband whatever yeah he is, is like forcing her to monetize off of her her dad yeah is so it her dad it's is that the dad? guy mm-hmm. he looks yeah. so young Maybe no he does she does have a boyfriend though oh. that's like there I don't know I think the relationship with the boyfriend is kind of weird too he it's just like looks odd you like know what I mean? why is he like. You would think that they would limit her ability to have outside influence like that, like have a personal relationship when everything else in her life is controlled. Or, everything has still been controlled. I don't know. It's but just very I, weird. I how disheveled she still looks. Like, I just don't know. <laughs> like, disheveled. Like, she, has, she still has a beautiful home, you know. She has still access to money or whatever. Right. Money. But her makeup just looks like she was held underwater for 15 hours. Like, I just don't understand if she... This is something she's doing on purpose. If like I agree, I don't get the makeup and the clothes either. She never like moved on. I I suppose it's very weird. There's something going on. I kind of (laughs) believe in the conspiracy a little bit. Like there's there's something deeper going on there. Right. But yeah, back to Meghan and Harry. I wanted to touch on um something you mentioned, Alexa. The the loss of identity, and Mm. you said that she used to be an advocate for for feminism and women speaking up but I feel like a lot of women can relate to losing yourself in a relationship Mm -hmm. yeah I mean I've been there and all of a sudden I look back and I'm like this is not me so it it would make sense that something like that happened to her yeah it doesn't even have to be in a relationship I don't want to restrict this only to like a one-way you know it can happen like going through a hard time for instance I'm, I'm here without my family right so Sometimes when I'm low on cash, there, there's not someone I can turn to and be like, hey, can you spot me like this month's rent? It's like, Alexa, figure it out. Or you're like, the street is your home, you know? So sometimes losing yourself in a job and just working mm-hmm. extra hard and still being a full-time student and having a dog that you need to take care of and walk and feed and get the vaccines, you, you tend to lose yourself. And then when you're finally financially stable again, and you can lean off of some work, you kind of forget who you are outside of the perimeters of like your job duties and your school ethics. And mm-hmm. and you kind of have that free time that you just sit in your bedroom and you're like, who am I? Like, what do I enjoy doing? Like, it's weird that I'm not working. It's weird that I don't have something to do for someone or for myself, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's completely normal to lose your identity from time to time. What's important is that you realize it And you take steps to correct it, no matter how small these steps are. Mm -hmm. You know, even if it's allocating five minutes a day just to recognize that you are lost, that in itself is keeping track of this journey so you know when to end it and when you see, like, you can't take control again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Totally. I completely agree with you. Um, yeah, there's, there's something to be said about getting lost in the rat race of the life that you've created for yourself or just the life that you have to live. Um, and, you know, having things to like pull you back to yourself. Like in many ways for me, that's family. You know, they always tend to be like, like we're we're just nosy and like all up in each other's <laughs> business. And like my family will call me on something when I'm like off kilter. Like they're always going to be the spotlight that will like shine back in my face almost. Um, and I feel like for her in the interview, it sounded like she really couldn't even reach out to the people that would normally be those kinds of like tethers to who she is. You know, she was being isolated from her family, isolated from her friends. You know, Harry seems like he can only do so much. He's one man. <laughs> you know, your boyfriend can only do so much for you. Um, and it's really important to try to find things. I wonder what she really did to like get back to herself because in some ways it feels like she got pregnant, they left and like now she's just okay. Like what, I wish she would have talked more about the journey of like healing that she went on to like come back to a place where she no longer feels like suicidal and out of touch and out of sorts. Mm -hmm. Perhaps she's still in that, you know, maybe she can't talk about it just yet. Mm -hmm. Having first hand experiences of not having a resource to, to reach out to like mm-hmm. you guys have a family and you guys are so comfortable and, and close which is amazing but not everyone has that as yeah. a resource so unfortunately um it takes extremes for you to finally be there for yourself sometimes and not mm-hmm. always hopefully you know you're one of the lucky ones that you kind of catch yourself early and you can divert but other times you kind of put on a face for everyone else and including yourself saying that everything is okay mm-hmm. until you hit that rock bottom. And for her, it was suicidal tendencies and perhaps noticing that someone watching you can only do so much. At the end of the day, you're the one that, that has to save your life. And if yeah. you choose not to, then that's the route. And if you choose to, you're the only person that can change that. Yeah. It's just like when in bad relationships, you know, when someone sees the potential in the other, but they haven't recognized or fulfilled it or acknowledged it, you can only do so much until they want to become the potential that they inherently have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of people can relate to this as well because we just went through quarantine and nobody was working. I felt a little lost for a second there. And something I really did to try to get back to myself was try new things and rediscover myself in a sense. So I'm not someone who likes to work out. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to work out. I'm going to see if maybe I've changed and now this is my thing. I'm going <laughs> to love it. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna find a new show. I'm gonna go to the weird Zoom happy hours that they were having. Oh my God. Maybe see if that's my thing. That was a dark time. (laughs) But, you know, I think that's a good tip for anybody out there is just uh, since you don't know who you are, this is the moment to just like uh, not go back to who you were before, who you remember, be someone completely new, find out what works for you now, Mm -hmm. try new things. Yeah. I also think like last thing um, that I want to touch on is the race aspect of this. Um, Yeah. How is this still going? 2021. I mean, like, honestly, it's just like so tired, like get over it. Um, But I just think it's interesting that Harry was like, oh, this is where you're going to take this like so early on. And, like, really recognized that with his family. And she was just like, no, they'll never, they're they're not going to be racist. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought that was interesting. At the end, he was like, she said, my only regret was that I believed them when they said that they would protect me. And, you know, it's like we give people our trust and our, our beliefs. And when they let us down, it's like such it's like such a shock it's like whiplash almost and i just think it's it's interesting that she just blindly jumped into this you know like i are you sure i mean you talked about how strong family is so perhaps 
being a, almost like adopted by a family when you have the same notion of like my family is this way so even when i join forces with your family i expect the same return i know i just feel like there was like a lack of like due diligence on her part like how could she not have googled them i don't know like okay she no but to answer <laughs> that she explained it perfectly in the interview she said I'm from California. I grew up meeting celebrities. No, I know. I thought it was the same thing. And in a sense, I even thought the same thing. We don't have royals or monarchs in the U.S. So I don't really have a concept of, like, how you treat a king or a queen. It's kind of like a celebrity. And she very quickly realized, no, this is not the same thing. And, very yeah, that's, that's something um, I wanted Alexa to kind of touch on. Like, <laughs> you, you are... From from that side of the world and it's more common not in your country but you know it's it's a little more of a thing so did you see the royals as celebrities or like how do you see them no not at all celebrities were one thing and royalty was another when you bring up royalty it's like almost going into like a time warp like you're going back centuries the same mindset that our grandparents grandparents would have is how you should treat royalty they're mm -hmm. going to see you as commoners you do not have the same rights as them you need to like kiss the floor they walk on kind of i've had the great pleasure of not meeting anyone um, <laughs> <laughs> i obviously have come across guards and you know all these famous movies in london where people try and mm -hmm. up the guards mm -hmm. or whatever you know so you see mostly just the forces on the outside keeping us out, um, yeah. which we just tantalize and have fun with, if you will. But um, no, I would I would never see them in the same as I saw celebrities, because celebrities, at least from how I understood it from my culture, is that you're a celebrity because usually of a talent of yours, NASA, whatever, maybe, yeah. something mm -hmm. respectable. Or because you're a great actor and actress, um, but it's very frivolous. It's nothing of true importance mm. at least in comparison to centuries of lineage and then, you know, white supremacy. You know, mm. especially talking to I don't know colonialism yeah. mm -hmm. and the history yeah. of that with yeah. that family. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just think it's I think it's I interesting that, that she. <laughs> oh no, it's fine. Um, it's, I just think it's interesting that she didn't, like, Google what's up. Like, I would be like, T -t 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 <laughs> I would be like that cat meme, like, yeah. what's going on? Like, I need to know, like, who these, and I understood what she said. Like, I was getting, like, this is his family. Like, I'm assuming everything he's telling me is what I need to know. Um, but yeah, I was just like, girl, do your Googles. <laughs> but there's only so much you can google i don't even think uh, i thought the same way that she did you know they're a family they treat each other like normal family mm -hmm. but they really don't you curtsy to the queen even if you're a family member you talk to them in a certain way it's very formal and although you're family you're still in the old times like yeah you, you still have things to prove like even if you're next in line that can easily be robbed or taken from you if you don't prove yourself worthy no matter how mm. close you are to the family i think that's something to take away no matter from this interview or from tv shows or from this podcast but um in life that's it's the same um we can apply to anything is that you're constantly gonna have to prove yourself um, to other people, but the most important uh, the most important person that you need to prove yourself to is yourself And I think that's something everyone can agree upon is looking back at yesterday and saying that today was a different step Whether that's trying something new like exercising <laughs> or, or you're pushing yourself a little more in your work or you know, just whatever it may be but just constantly being faced with that and not being surprised or disappointed when you have to show your abilities to others and if they don't accept it or they don't have the same bar as you there's no reason to lash out to them it's just it's not a you're not a good compatible match yeah and you should just move on it's like any relationship whether that's friendship or romantic you shouldn't be angry at the situation just learn from it and move on there's no reason to yeah. stay in that situation and mindset and tie yourself down to negativity because it's only gonna hurt yourself no one else is being hurt by the situation but you yeah because you're the only one controlling your mindset totally yeah completely agree
Yeah, I thought it was great. I think Oprah did a great job. Absolutely. The- oh, yeah. <laughs> <all> the <laughs> she got all the juice, all the tea. She was just as shocked as we were. I, I loved it. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was so good. And I really liked this conversation as well. Yeah, this was great. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, it is time for tea. Yes, time for tea. Although we're not drinking tea tonight, we're sipping on some rosé. Yes. We're still going to spill it. So what's your first story for us, Adriana? So in celebrity baby news, Emrata gave birth to her baby, mm-hmm. Sylvester Apollo Beer. Bear. Bear. Yeah. Is the name. It's a boy? I guess. Remember, she's oh, not discussing his yeah. gender until he's 18. What? Them. They, yeah. She's. 18? Yeah. She wants to raise them in a way that is. Not binary. Yeah. Non binary and just like able to be able to define themselves for themselves. <laughs> I, that, that's probably going to be hard for a child. Hopefully, um, they just n- not like. Okay, but like, dude, <laughs> there's going to be teams in high school, middle school, boys against girls. What are you going to say? Uh, today, I choose that. Like, it's going to create so much confusion. I don't know. I like, there has to be some kind of structure. Not that I'm against this in yeah. any way. Yeah. But until 18 is such a large frame you know what i mean yeah even if let's say you, you want to give it um some kind of rails i don't know until the age of five yeah like and then gravitate. after that yeah gravitate towards one gender and then after that see if they like teeter towards one side more I right said, let them spread their wings right but like nothing from like day one i feel like but i too many but i think the name is like so very long. masculine sylvester apollo beer exactly bear sylvester. why can i say bear? it's bear <laughs> it's bear but i keep saying beer beer <laughs> it's bear <laughs> sylvester apollo bear and she said sly like sly that's like very i guess they could go by apollo and that could be female and or male that could That's be kind of gender neutral. Yeah. Apollo, perhaps. She said sly. Mm-hmm. This girl's still on beer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, I just think it's uh I mean, I kinda like the name, sorta. I like the name. I'm just obsessed with baby names. Like I'm just always so interested to what see do what you people think of um Elon Musk's babies. Oh, we talked about that. <laughs> we talked about it. What's the baby's name again? Like so long. <laughs> it's like <laughs> A, a something yeah it's like a some archangel archangel ash, oh no his name is ash i think ash, ash archangel okay yes ash is actually on my list of baby names i love ash that's okay. cute but archangel i mean yeah. it's like a whole thing mm-hmm. um but yeah i just think hmm interesting yeah I we'll see what happens i saw the photo that she posted and they look so cute they together. do look cute i really like her I, I like her as like a influencer celebrity person. Like I like to look at her Instagram. Okay. I'm neither here nor there with her. It's like whatever. I love her engagement ring. I think her and her husband are so. No, cute. her engagement ring was fire, and so were her wedding pictures. Yeah, adorable. You're you're right. She's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Emily Ryan is just take a lot of convincing. <laughs> Mention of a wedding ring, yeah. You know what? She's kind of cool. <laughs> I'm a sucker for jewelry. <laughs> you guys already know. If you want to send something, <laughs> no. Hint, hint. <laughs> You're Italian, even more. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> you, you, you know. it out. <laughs> okay. What's your story that you want to talk about? Okay. The best news I've heard all week. Um, Christine Quinn, star of Netflix show Selling Sunset, just mm-hmm. confirmed via her Instagram that they were confirmed for a season four and five. And they started filming. Have you seen Selling Sunset? No, I have Oh my gosh. I I'm it. not on Netflix a lot, to be honest. Really? Well, I'm in the midst of like moving, so okay. everything has just been chaotic mess. Got it. Yeah, I just finally did laundry today after. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Selling Sunset is so good. It's two seasons? Three? I think it's three at this point. Yeah, three seasons on Netflix. We talked about it on the show. It's so good. It's like 
real estate porn and like hot girls and uh, just like petty drama, office drama within okay. the real estate firm. See, that's just not usually what I tend to gravitate towards. Mm. And also maybe it's me just being a little bit bitter, but I went out with this guy that was a, you know, realtor. Mm-hmm. And ever since him, <laughs> it's been a bad taste in my mouth. So seeing that, I was just like... <laughs> that's hilarious uh, that's wow so i didn't know realtor was is put on the bad list of, of professions to date uh, it was just his, his concept of you know the first thing he said to me on a date it was like you should change career paths because people would want to buy from a pretty hot blonde and i'm just like so there's nothing else to me you just like slapped that identity on me like, got it where am I from? <laughs> like, right. Even know. Yeah. Right. You know what's funny? Uh, in the real estate business, it's all about looks, and that's kind of what the show touches on. Yeah. All of the all of the people who work at this firm are extremely attractive. Some of the women used to be models, mm-hmm. so it just like goes through their life and like their struggles, and that's what I find kind of interesting about the show. But realtor people will like try to hook you in. They want a little trophy wife that's also a realtor. So they really do. It's yeah. very weird. It's a weird mentality. It's not for me. It's too easy. I think I like the struggle somehow. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Yeah, but I'm super excited for this sh- show. When's it supposed to air? Do you guys know? I think later this year. Yeah. So I'm excited. This I'm ready. F- Jesus Christ, why are we talking about it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for season four and five. Like, that's just so exciting. And six. Mm-hmm. Let's just bring it to the table. Yeah, it is. All of, all of the seasons, I want this to be like, um, what's a reality show that's been on forever? Maybe like a Housewives franchise. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling it. <laughs> Literally. But what else do you have? Okay, so Anderson Pack and Bruno Mars <laughs> have teamed up for a new band. It's called Silk Sonic. Oh. And they dropped their first single last week. Oh, I heard it. The song is out? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're I'm dropping an out. album. I think the album actually comes out tomorrow. Wait, no way. And I'm just so excited. Like, this song is, like, sexy, funky groovy vibes and i'm just feeling it so much i love anything bruno mars does like he's been just disapp- like hearing for the past few months right I mean, this pack has its own thing there's always stuff coming out yeah but i was just like where's bruno like what happened to him is it just me or did he also get like a little bit uglier <laughs> Like when he first started, <laughs> like no, when he first started his career, I was like, "Ooh, hot damn, yes!" Mm-hmm. And then after, I'm like, "What's happening? Mm, I don't know about this." I don't know, but I'm just like so here for this funky, groovy '70s vibe. Like I am obsessed, and I'm just so excited for this album. I just can't get enough. Do you know if they release it on Spotify or is it only Apple Music? No, it's on Spotify. Okay. So I'm just very excited. I think I think it comes out tomorrow. So I'm just like I'm ready for like a new album to like get into. Mm-hmm. I'm like sick of Dua Lipa at this point. <laughs> sick of Dua Lipa. No, I'm still jamming out to the Levitating remix. That's my <laughs> spring song. But yeah, Anderson Pack and Bruno Mars is the duo that I didn't know I like, needed. I need it. Same. Like I'd be afraid of it if I was an artist though. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're gonna sweep sweep the awards next year mm-hmm. yeah for sure like they're winning everything and if they don't like stop it stop it if they don't it's it's gonna be a problem i love how i say that and i haven't even listened to the song yet no the song is so good it's like oh my god you, it's so good <laughs> Okay. Do you know what the song is called? Leave the door open. There you go. Plug it in. It's just like, <laughs> ah, it's just like sexy. It just makes you want to like make love on a beach. I don't know. on the floor vibes? Yes. Okay. But like more funky. We love that. Ugh, it's everything. Okay. So that's how we're going to end the show. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I think we're going to get copyrighted for that, but y'all can go listen to it. And for sure. You're, you're listening to this on Friday, definitely. So the album might already be out. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other story that I have is Rihanna mm. Queen has trademarked Fenty hair and plans to expand into the hair care industry. Interesting. But where's the album? Fire. But where's the album? Stop it. 
I feel like we have to stop asking the artist what where is the album. I think it's just that sense of nostalgia. You know, when you grew up with like Rihanna, Britney, etc., it's just kind of like th- that emotion that you have attached to an old record mm-hmm. <laughs> releases, <laughs> if you will. You kind of just miss that. Obviously, she's evolved and she has chosen to left the music industry behind, but you can't you can't hate for us to like kind of want it back. I know. <laughs> Did you hear about Cardi deleting her Twitter because people were like being rude to her about her album? No way. Yes. Yeah, so Cardi, she um deleted her Twitter because she is releasing like a doll. So she was doing promo for it. And then people were being like really rude in her comments. They were like, we don't want a fucking doll. Like, what is this? Where is your album? Like going off. And she was like, I don't understand what is happening right now. I'm deleting my Twitter. Like, so she like left Twitter and then she did a live and she was just like, I like I can understand that people want music for me. But like music takes time and like we don't just crank out music at like the drop of a hat like you can't expect like great albums to be made every six months like it's just impossible for any artist to deliver that and she was like and i'm also like a businesswoman like artists today we do other things like we do multiple things so not everything that we talk about or promote is going to be music and she's like you guys are crazy Mm. Um, so yeah, we gotta stop asking the people wh- where the album's at because no, they're just gently remind them. <laughs> <laughs> gently, I, I think my reminder was gentle because uh, I mean I know Rihanna has an album that she like is making. Right. Working, yeah, she okay. for a while. It's been like it's been years. <laughs> okay. No, it's been years in the making. So I'm just like, hmm, honey, where is it? But yeah, honey. <laughs> um. Do you have anything else? Nope. Okay, I have something else that kind of relates to what we just talked about. But JT of the City Girls, Mm -hmm. she um, was in a little scandal. They tried to cancel her on Twitter. Her Twitter is deleted, but that's not what I'm going to talk about. Really? Yes, her Twitter is deleted at the moment. Why? If anyone has seen JT's tweets, she has been on Twitter since the beginning of Twitter, and she has said some crazy things. People find her old tweets all the time. Um... (laughs) But, yeah, Um, what I did want to talk about, though, is she is dating Lil Uzi. They kind of confirmed it on Instagram recently, although we knew this was a couple. And I I find this couple strange. I do, too. Apparently, they're super in love, and he bought her a space wagon. Can we just have a picture as a reference of them together? (laughs) What's a space wagon? Okay, a space wagon it looks like a Rolls Royce on the inside, and on the outside, it looks like the Mars rover, basically. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, sure. You know what I thought of? You guys should just film the podcast as well. Like, have visuals on oh, YouTube. We do, but we're just being all audio right now. <laughs> Because we don't want to get cute. So this is JT from the City Girls. This is Lil Uzi Vert. So a space wagon. Is this just like one of those like rich people things that like isn't cute? He is a very, he's a strong character. He just got a diamond put into his forehead. I know. He is uh, just one of those types of guys. He likes weird things. He has several anime cars. So this is one of those rich people niche things that he <laughs> likes, and she's just like, yeah, I'm going to take it. I mean, sure. If your boyfriend wants to buy you something expensive, oh, of course right. you're going to accept. Mm-hmm. I just think this is like a really weird pairing. It is weird because she is from Liberty City, Miami. She makes like hood music with her best friend, Carisha, young Miami, and he is uh, this like psychedelic alternative like, rapper came up in the soundcloud era um he can be compared to like uh, maybe not musically but like personality vibe wise i would say tyler the creator like yeah like those types of guys yeah i mean he uh, i mean he was on bad and bougie 
He did really well on Bad English. Right. So he's got, like, flavor. He's just, like, very weird also. Yeah. She even tweeted about it. She was like, oh, you expect him to be with this rocker white girl, but he likes a hood bitch like me. (laughs) Yes. Maybe that's why they canceled her. I'm not sure. Jaw is dropped for those who cannot see. (laughs) That was the tweet. So, yeah, this is a weird pairing, but if they're happy, they're happy. Interesting. Question to you guys. Um, would you be able to be in a relationship with someone in the same field as you, even if it's slightly different, but you guys full-heartedly believe in what you're doing in your job? So this is obviously related to their music, but yeah. since we're not musicians, or at least in my opinion, I'm definitely not a musician or a singer. Um, so passion-wise, what, what do you guys feel like that would be? A conflict? Hmm. Something that you guys could harmonize? What? I think it'd be interesting. Like, I work in website development and technology, and so I think it would be interesting to, like, date somebody else that's from that world because they understand, like, the day-to-day, like, workflow kind of thing. And and if they, like, knowledge-wise, you're able to share and, like, bounce ideas off of each other. and like, a sense of competitiveness well mm. it's like but i know more because maybe i'm older than you or maybe i have more experience oh well, yeah i mean i think it depends on like your competitive level i'm not very competitive personally okay. um so i have like no desire to be like i'm better than you so i don't know if i would feel that way ex- about like my boyfriends interesting you know okay. I would just be like, you're in your lane, I'm in mine, and... So you're well balanced. What's your sign? I'm a Pisces. Mm -hmm. How about you, Selena? I'm a Sagittarius, and I hate this idea. (laughs) 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 And it's it's funny, I... Although although I wasn't uh, sure about pursuing journalism Mm -hmm. when I was younger, I've always been a writer, And I always knew I would not be able to date another writer because in creative fields, like your work is your baby, you put your heart into it and it is so competitive. Like I have days where I'm my own favorite writer and if somebody does better than me, I'm like, I hate you. Why wasn't I creative enough to come up with that? So I would not be able to date someone like that. And I just know that every writer journalist is like that to a certain extent. And my boyfriend, if he was in the same field as me, would probably feel the same way about me. Interesting. So funny. This is like... <laughs> Am I, did I lie? <laughs> no, but I just love it. That's like Carrie and Berger from S- Sex and the City. Perfect example. Carrie and Berger, both writers, and they could not make it work. No. She started... I think she... Started she doing got, better than him. And he was jealous him. and yeah. just hated her for it. Resented her. Yes. What about so you? What about me? <laughs> what do you do for work? Like, so, what are you studying? Right now, I'm kind of doing a bunch of things just because I'm in saving up money mode. Mm-hmm. So I'm just doing little things here and there just to get me to the move. Got it. But I'm doing electronic marketing with a minor in journalism, but I switched that. So as an A-level, I did journalism with a minor in law. Okay. And then I had a change of heart after I worked at a law firm and I lost my soul. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> So now I need marketing, and I do some photography. Actually, today I just shot um, one of my friends. Selena saw some pictures. Um, Fire. Yeah, she was beautiful. You look like you could be a photographer. Like, (laughs) not even lying. Like, that seems like the lane. Really? (laughs) Yeah. So that's usually what I do. So, like, tomorrow? No, tomorrow's Friday. So Saturday, like, I don't know if you guys know the Anderson. It's in... Yeah. So I'm their photographer. I'm their event photographer. Really? Have, like a ladies thing going on Saturday from like 8 p.m. till 2 a.m. Okay. So I'll be there shooting for the night. And like, those are like my side gigs, if you will. Cool. Um, I've just always had an in with live music here in Miami. I've just been very yeah. fortunate and I love live music. But going back to partners, I'm an extremely competitive Mm, what's your sign i'm libra though (laughs) oh you're a perfectionist too so like for instance selena and i if we were to write a piece i would obviously always take into consideration how i deliver my critiques and also my praises towards Mm. her 
um, but I'm always going to keep an eye out for her competitive edge and in integrate that in my paper after she's done in order to be on her same level or surpass her. Got it. But I'm always aware of other people's feelings. I'm uh -huh. never that person to like step on others. I would never be that person. Yeah. I'll be like that quiet panther in the back, but I'll yeah. be like, who having the time of my life? secretly stepping on everyone <laughs> interesting yeah. i just like don't understand that mindset like i just feel like i'm in competition with no one i think it's that sense of power with oneself i don't really see it as taking power from mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. but knowing i think this is something also that i was raised on it's like i don't care what you do as long as you're the best so since that mm -hmm. was told to me from day one I really don't care what I do as a profession as long as I'm one of the best. Maybe not the number one, but top five for sure. Yeah. So do you feel like that's, that's a lot of pressure? Oh, yeah. This is what the series of mental breakdowns happened <laughs> throughout the year. But, <laughs> Interesting. But with that, it comes, it, it's, it's the same premise as what we were talking about with the royalty is that you have extreme highs and extreme lows depending mm. on how far you push yourself. But with these extreme highs, you know, you have to prepare yourself for those rock bottoms and some people aren't, you know, um, there's a lot of artists, Mac Miller, you know, mm -hmm. a bunch of other people that had these high lives and but were not equipped for the lows that came with those. Correct. So they, they turn to other things. Yeah. And I'm not trying to say, you know, oh, look at them weak by mm -hmm. no means because mm -hmm. no one knows what they walk through and yeah. their experiences. But one just has to know that if you're really going to go for something and if you're going to try and surpass people that may have years on you or experience on you, you need to be able to take a beating in case you don't make it. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Well, I thoroughly, thoroughly, <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed this conversation with you. I'm so glad Selena brought you on. Thank you were you. so great. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I just love your mindset and like your outlook and just, oh, you are everything. Yes. Uh, no, this <laughs> set the bar for every guest oh that we have. I'm gonna be like, so listen to Alexa's episode and then we'll talk. Right, like, can you come with it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you are so wonderful. Thank you so much for coming oh, on. Me. And yeah. every thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you for tuning into another episode of the TV and T podcast. Go ahead and subscribe to us wherever you are listening, whether that's Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, you know, all the places. And wherever you are listening to us, please go ahead and leave us a five star review. Tell us something nice. And if you're watching us on YouTube, feel free to subscribe and to give this video a thumbs up. And we will be back next Friday with another episode to serve up the tea on the latest TV and pop culture news. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>